welcome everyone um, to today's session. We're calling this um, fashion question time, but this is an opportunity to meet some of um, our, our graduates um, of the class of 2020. I just wanted to start um, by introducing myself. My name is Judith Rosser Davis. I'm Head of Government Relations and Education at the British Fashion Council, and I also chair the BFC Colleges Council. This is a really exciting moment for us, born out of very difficult circumstances, but an exciting moment that we're having our first ever graduate preview day. Normally we'd be doing this in May, um, here we are in July. It's been a tough time I know for our educators and for the students uh, completing their work under such difficult circumstances but we're really proud of everything that you've done and glad to see you here today. I'd like to extend a special mention to industry. Um, I really um, do welcome you to our day today and really encourage you to look through the work of the students that we have online. Um, I'd like to ask you in particular if you could take the time to uh, go onto the British Fashion Council website. If you look in the education section, we have there the graduate preview. We have some amazing portfolios from all the students around our College's Council members, um, which is fantastic to see. We also have on there um, our College's Council universities as well. They have their own profiles and they have in their portfolios and PDFs that you can look through of their graduating uh, students' work. It's been running since 1993, a long-term relationship with our colleges to try and bring industry and academia closer together. Um, we run competitions for students. We also do a lot of seminars and we work closely with course leaders around the country to really um, inform and debate and discuss the issues of the day and I guess that's never really felt more pertinent than it does now and we're so proud of being able to work with you all to showcase your fantastic work. So um, without further ado I'd like to introduce um, today's panellists. Um, I'll start with the designer Ashish. Um, thank you for joining us. This is uh, fantastic. I'll let you talk about yourselves in a moment. We also have Choma Nadi on the call, um, who's from Vogue.com. Um, and chairing today's session is long-term collaborator, friend, associate of the BSC, uh, Sarah Moa, um, who I'd like to introduce as our uh, ambassador for emerging talent. Alongside Mary Beth Parker is our pillar president for education. So thank you for joining us, Sarah, and I'll hand over the reins to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Judith, and um, welcome everybody. Congratulations on on graduating, and thank you especially to um, Sh Shoma and um, uh, Ashish for for joining us. What we're going to be discussing today is how do we communicate fashion now? You as students have been in the same position actually as everybody in fashion, thinking what on earth to do while working at home and, and how to communicate fashion um, in different ways because going forward perhaps there won't be fashion shows as much or they'll be different and the, the kind of uh, the blend of digital and um, physical is become, going to become more and more important and a, a creative field where, where there really are no rules although it's been such a, a stress and a shock for you to, to have to go home and, and work alone we're really fascinated to find out what solutions you're coming up with. I'm going to go around quickly and everybody can introduce themselves who are the student representatives here, starting with um, Tamira. Hi everyone, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Tamira Francis. I study fashion textiles, specialising in knitwear at Middlesex University. Uh, hello, I'm Sang Kim. I'm from South Korea. I studied menswear in University of Westminster, MA menswear. Hi, my name is Talina Edwards and I have just finished MA Menswear at the University of Westminster. So, hi everyone, my name is Raquel Cueto. I'm originally from Spain and I'm specialised in women's wear fashion design. I'm, I've been studying during these three years in the University of Salford. Uh, hello, my name is Amaranth Frost. Um, I'm a women's wear designer who has recently sidestepped into knitwear. I've just completed my MA at the Royal College of Art. Um, I've completed it in Tower Hamlets in Bethnal Green in lockdown. Hello guys, uh, my name is Maus um, and I go to Middlesex University or used to go to Middlesex University and I specialise in knitwear and I focus on women's wear and men's wear. I'm going to ask everybody to premiere <laughs> their, their, their video um, and then we'll talk through your collection. So I'd love to start with Tamara please. 
Yo, hey you girl in the tight top skirt. You make me head swell till my blood vessel burst. Hey you girl in the tight top shorts. You speed up ten more beats to me heart. Hey you girl in the tight top blows. So could you explain how you did that video and, and why? We were asked to choose a look from our collection. I'll just show you my pages of um, my process. So I chose to do my second look, um, which was initially meant to be a knitted mesh bottle, bottle top dress. You know, I really was looking forward to making this, so this was my favourite sample. Um, so I chose to do this look. Um, so instead, I you know, didn't have the materials with me, so I recreated um, my dress out of tracing paper to represent the mesh, and I embroidered on top of that with my yarns I had laying around, and, um, you know, I also re-replicated bottle cup, bottle cup, um, bottle cup, sorry, um, and stuck them on at the back. Um, and then for the background of my video, I just had like got some pizza boxes laying around, so I painted on top of those, um, created like a mini club, and I, you know, dressed the. Um, I had like some bottles of alcohol laying around, um, and I dressed them with my um, dress. I dressed them with my mini garment, and. I thought it was a fun way of showing dance hall culture because it's about movement and having fun. It's not meant to be really serious. I thought dressing up in rum bottles is a fun way of showing that. And then I just made my own mini club with me just laying around. And I thought, you know, stop motion video would be the best way to show that. Had you ever done stop motion before? No, I have never done stop motion video. So, you know, going into lockdown was very, it was very difficult, as I'm sure with everyone else. So, you know, I, but I feel, you know, this gave me an opportunity to play around with stop motion and animation. So I'm kind of glad I did because I had a lot of fun doing it. And it was inspired by your mum, is that right? Yes. So my graduate collection is inspired by my mother and the clothes she used to wear. Um, so she, her and her sister used to make. Um, for their nights out, which had a Jamaican dance hall theme. And at the time, uh, my mum and her sisters didn't really understand the rules of pattern cutting. So whilst on the dance floor, their clothes would fall apart. She told me quite lots of funny stories about that. So that inspired me to look in ways of manipulating fabric and textiles to look as if it's falling apart the body. So on my first page, I have like my collages of my mum and the clothes she'd wear. I had uh, images of uh, funny dance or album covers mixed with my own illustrations I've done from films I've watched. And this page, um, I have been, did, you know, some draping on mini mannequins um, with my knit samples and playing around with the position thing of it. I experimented with laddering on the knitting machine and creating lace holes and like positioning it in ways of, to make it look like it's falling apart, which was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's my final lineup. And, you know, I thought it was a best way to show uh, my interpretation of dance hall. Um, I think it was important to have different poses for each look, as it's like, you know, different, you know, they're all going out, they're all partying, having fun. Thank you, Tamara. It's amazing you came up with something so amazingly cheerful that made everybody mm -hmm. smile. Can we uh, move to San Kim now, please? Oh yeah, sure.
This is the video I have made. <laughs> uh, our guests can react to that, um, Ashish. Oh, that's brilliant. I loved that. Uh, thank so you. So fun and clever and just, yeah, really, really effective. <laughs> Actually, the thing that I've already noticed, I've only seen two people's work, and um, Tama, that was beautiful as well. I loved it. I loved the bottle tops. But um, you know what I suddenly realized is so interesting. The minute you take away showing your collections um, from off the runway, from that kind of structured runway system, you suddenly put so much more individuality into it because it kind of expands what you're saying into um, something that's so out of your normal practice. Mm -hmm. So you're becoming suddenly, you know, you're a film director, you're doing collage, you're doing all kinds of amazing creative things to kind of, in a way, support what you're saying through your clothes. And I think that's really important now in the world we live in and, and you know, the, the things we say about our brands. I mean, that's what brands are, you know, it's, it's about building up a whole story around your clothes, um, like a world around your clothes as it were. Um, and I just thought that was so brilliant because it just takes it out of that really structured and can I say sometimes boring way of showing clothes into actually something really exciting and energetic. Um, just my opinion. I'm sure you agree with that, Ch uh, Choma, because um, your, your, your job is um, translating clothes into moving images and, and, and um, with so many, covering so many brands and uh, labels and, and talents, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I think fashion should be without limitations. And I think those two videos were just a perfect example of that. It's been interesting to see some of the bigger brands this week and no disrespect to the bigger brands, but I haven't seen anything that's excited me in the same way that's been as innovative and they have the, these inc insane budgets. And to think that you both made these really amazing, you know, like, like as you said, like created a different world. And I think it's really about creating a world and bringing people in. And uh, yeah, that was really, that was the best thing I've seen in a long time. So thank you. <laughs> San Kim, can you just tell us how on earth you did that? Actually, after lockdown, I couldn't really do anything in my small accommodation. So, I have decided to try to reflect this situation as honest as possible. So first of all, I collect all those supermarket shopping bags from whole our flatmates and then just take them all. <laughs> shooting shooting on, um, on the underground and, and all that, how, I mean, how difficult was that? I mean, actually really thinking about how, how the, the organization, let alone in, you know, strict lockdown. That must uh, be actually, it wasn't really hard because at that time there wasn't really many people in the tube and then that uh there was the only where i could go supermarket and tube <laughs> fantastic thank you okay then i'd like to introduce helena edwards um also from from westminster is that correct yes. yeah we're classmates <laughs> and without further ado helena Hello, my name is Helena Edwards and I'm on the MA Menzo course at the University of Westminster. What drives me as a designer, I guess, is that um, I look into my Afro-Caribbean heritage and I just bring that to the forefront because to me it's quite important to bring these histories into mainstream consciousness because I feel like education is needed to create a reform in terms of how we treat people, how I don't know, how we treat people, how we look after people. I guess just being a bit non-knowledgeable about different cultures will kind of help eradicate the sort of prejudice we have. And especially in this time right now with, I guess, COVID and what's happening in America, I think my work's just more, if not now, when, I think my work's quite important right now to send the message and to kind of get people curious into learning about different histories, to get people engaged, to get people knowledgeable so they feel like they have, I don't know, a good sense of knowledge about different subjects that makes them curious into learning about different cultures, different histories, because that's what I love to do and I think what I want to do in my work is make people feel the same way. And I guess with my, what I do, my craft, which is, I guess I'm specialising, well, I am specialising in fashion. I like the idea of storytelling this message through clothing and if it's not clothing 
maybe through posters I do or zines or 3D work or my textiles, kind of understanding these cultures, these backgrounds and kind of showing my point of view in it and storytelling this history. The beginning of the clip was um, a club night um, uh, live, live stream that you did with, uh, with uh, Charles Jeffrey for Black Pride during Fashion Week. Yeah, Last so um, he invited me and another designer on the course to use his platform to showcase our work and he opened it up to um, other creatives in the industry um, for, of black people of colour and celebrating also donating the profits to um, Black Pride to showcase our work and it was nice to have that platform because um, a singer called Rachel Chinori wore my outfits and wore some archive pieces and it was quite nice to see my work come together in light of that. There's something else I, that I happen to know about you because um, after this, after graduation, mm -hmm. um, you thought very really deeply about um, everything that is in your practice that you've discovered um, and you've taken, uh, you've decided the path you're going to take. So would you mind sharing that with, with everyone? So um, I'm a researcher for the Black Curriculum and we're um, an initiative trying to get Black history into schools and um, promote that all year round 360. And we're focusing on black history at the moment and that's our aim. Which I think is amazing. I mean, part of your, um... I'm sure for everybody, being in education, you discover yourselves. Fashion has many, many different paths, more paths than anybody ever thought. But I do think that um, going back into education, educating people behind you is so, is so important now, especially now to, to change the way education is in this country. And exactly what you said, actually, because when I started first year of my master's, I'd say that's when like a better sense of self came about with the work I portrayed in the video with um, for example the miniature dolls that I did and the flags I did that was just from self-exploration of just discovering my history I'd say so I was I was openly going to more exhibitions and galleries and I found that very informative and from that I just found artists who were communicating their experience the message of for example, um, living through the Thatcher period and how art was then and what things were just happening in the UK and then just seeing how they portrayed it. And it's, I was just blown away. And I think saying this, I'm speaking about an artist who's my favourite called Lebena Himmid. And um, I think when I first saw her work um, at the South London Gallery, it was an exhibition maybe three years ago before she won the Turner Prize. I remember just seeing that and just seeing the whole exhibition with 27 artists and I think that's when I was like this is this is it <laughs> um, well education and fashion I think is a platform that can that can inspire and educate in itself I mean mm -hmm. I, I, I think Shoma we're, we're, we're seeing that so much um, aren't we it's not just about a look anymore it's about people's mm -hmm. stories yeah and storytelling about it as well I think that's very important too because from that when you know about it you'll be more informed and it's someone more knowledgeable about the subject too Okay, um, could we go to the Raquel Cueto in Spain, please? So this is like um, kind of magazine that I'm going to flip through. It's not like an actual video. So I just wanted to say how I communicate fashion. I think for me, I communicate fashion through people by observing, uh, seeing, listening and understanding the cultural nouns and shifts in behavior that they might lead to trends. How we communicate fashion isn't important as much as how we respond to the needs of people. How we live, how we want to live, where we want to go, what we are listening to, I think all these things help us form a better understanding. We look at the world of how it was, how is it now, and where is it going. People uh, are at the heart of this, so we reflect, analyze, learn, and develop, implement, design solutions, and then we tell the story that we need to tell. So there is no set way to communicate fashion. And yes, we see the runway and the magazines, but people are all the time communicating their narrative based on their environment. And that's the coolest part uh, for, that's the coolest part of fashion research for me. How we communicate fashion at the end isn't as important as how we communicate fashion through the design process. And here is part of my uh, final design project that I'm just gonna talk about it, how my, what my concept is. So my research was based on um, the Chicano movement. 
it was addressed the issue of the negative ethnic stereotype of the Mexicans in the American continent. But it is the women of that movement who most fascinated me because they were really strong women. And that's why I call this project the Chola Movement. Um, can you hear the flip of the page? I don't know if it's too loud. <laughs> so called Cholas or Pachuca, the, the, they were a group of Mexican women who openly challenged conventional notions and feminine beauty and sexuality, especially in the Mexican culture. I found this very interesting because for me, they represent the freedom of being who they wanted to be without, being, without, without fear. They embrace the idea of playing with duality and with the masculinity and the femininity. So they were really strong women, independent and with unique strength. This collection, uh, I just wanted to explore in this collection how these girls try to defend and build their own identity. I knew that I wanted to make my clothes for this final collection. I want them to be pure and to empower without being really aggressive. I want them to be you know, desired for the people and be, uh, to be accessible. Tailoring was part of, was the starting point of my design development. As I found that these people used to wear, uh, they used to wear like a really dramatic suit. They were called suit suits. So I just take the, the tailoring as the, main, the big point. Uh, this is some of the, the techniques. I wanted to push traditional forms and methods of tailoring. So I started to work on this. And those pictures, obviously, they were taken on the university. So at that time, I was still in the university. I, I'm just lucky that I had some, you know, 3D work that I could reflect in my digital portfolio. And um, I just wanted to, as I say, um, to push the traditional forms and methods of the tailoring. So I start to work on the stand to find new silhouettes and generating these kind of 3D shapes into blazers and coats and other garments. The universities are, are, are going to be changing. And I think that you as a participant in that, as a, pra as a practitioner, as practitioners as well, it's, this is a really exciting frontier as well. It's a time when you can c contribute to change and kind of make it happen. In my case, I think, well, I've been working during this time in just learning new programs such as Glow and just learn how, you know, 3D garments work because I guess I will have a wide range of job opportunities if I know how to manage those programs. But I would love to, to go straight away to work in the fashion industry. But at the same time, I, I want to finish some of my you know, uh, fashion of the final office that I could have made during lockdown as I didn't have the tools or the sewing machine, mannequin, nothing. So slowly I want to try to finish it and just collaborate with other artists to present it in a good way. So um, can we just move to Alexandra Sipa and see your, see your video, please. Hi, Ladra, <laughs> Aici cele mai simple obiecte sunt arate ca o avere. Indiferent de valoare, sunt păstrate să țină o viață. Stay. 
such a beautiful, essential quality to what you did. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it was made in collaboration with my partner and live-in filmmaker, Lucas Baker, who edited and researched for the movie and shot it. And out of need, I had to be the model, although I'm really uncomfortable on camera, but there it goes. It was shot in the middle of the lockdown, uh, I think at the beginning of May. And I built the entire set that is still up in my apartment. Wow, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And your and your um your uh, your your knit, your knitting and your embroidery is made out of um um phone wires. Yeah, it, everything is made out of discarded electrical wires from a recycling plant in East London. That I've been uh, taking wires from there since probably second year when I kind of discovered this lace technique um, and kept exploring it throughout my final year. It's a combination of Western lace techniques and some traditional Romanian ones and a lot of happy accidents that kind of taught me how to make it. Um, and it actually showed me uh, how important knowing a craft and how important artisanal fashion is, especially during lockdown when I didn't have any technicians, I didn't have any uh, equipment at all from CSM, but I was still able to create what I wanted to because everything is self-sufficient, handmade. Um, so I was really lucky. Well, I mean, what I will say is somebody who might have been to, been to a fashion show and might have seen a Central St. Martin's fashion show and might have seen your, your things on the runway. I learned much more, much more about you and your world through this than I would ever have, than we would we'd have ever have seen on the runway. So yeah, congratulations um, on that. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to Amaranth. We will beat the coronavirus, and we will beat it together. And therefore, I urge you, at this moment of national emergency, to stay at home, protect our NHS, and save lives. Yeah. Come over here, check me out, check me out, Red Flame. Chilling in New York. In the subway. Finna go relax. Probably so turn on my second Genesis. You know what I mean? Got my LA gears on. It's nighttime in the coffee shop. Yeah. Shouts out to all the Latin community. The whole Latin. Espanol, Cibuelo B. As I receive my gifts, no winter time. Thank God I'm eating, boy, no dinner time. Rap God with the lines like Walmart. Don't need awards, just make sure you give me mine. I don't get on a lot of people's songs Cause they don't understand that I did it this long Race God, I didn't travel so far Will be, nigga I didn't met God Red flame like Godfather eating pasta In New York by yourself in the winter time Home Alone 2 on VHS Sega Genesis Charlie Brown, Power Ranger movie on cable access. Game Genie, all a part of my success. Yeah. And I don't treat, nigga, you can deep dish. New York subway in the big city. Base world for life. God damn. Gotta catch this train. About to run downstairs. Man, New York looks so beautiful right now. congratulations to you and to everybody for doing things in in, in a really intense and, and personal way and and you I'm right turning into a I mean a filmmaker yeah, I mean um, I've never really explored film as a way to show my work and I kind of think if I'd stayed in college I probably would have never been forced to yeah. do that mm -hmm. uh, but it felt really right for the time and I think um, at that time, I, you know, we'd been gearing up to a presentation where we would have had a catwalk show and I really wanted to explore that, but in this kind of new world that we found ourselves in overnight, um, the new world where you're not really meant to go outside and the new world where you're the only model that you can access. Mm -hmm. And seeing that, I, I kind of what that played, like playing with that in that art form, um, yeah, 
it's been interesting and it's been I'm like I've learned so much. <laughs> I want to move to Miles. Uh, can I please up for you? Yo, fuck you, lion! Who put it? Take okay, one. Yo, guys, it's Miles here. I'm taking over the MDX fashion Instagram. Um, I'm going to keep you guys posted with uh, embroidery, styling shoots, inspiration, a little bit of insight into the way that I work. So keep tuned. Stay locked in. Your people, then. Uh, first thing, I'm going to show you how to make a balaclava out of a jumper that we have here. So stay tuned and keep locked in. So you got your back bit, your front bit, and you got the little bit that goes on top. Take your front bit, you place it on the back bit, then you take this bit and you place it over the circle so you should have something like that. Hope you got your body on and all your pens set. Be part of the fabric. We're gonna do a little bit of illustrations. So keep locked in. Stay posted. Yo yo, we had a little change of style, getting them to the set. Um, I got the illustration done, coloured it in off camera. Um, it's time for a little bit of styling, so keep posting, keep locked in. So that little bit of styling uh, really helps me influence uh, the way that I work. I take a lot of inspiration from the stuff that I put together and it will help me build um, a collection or put together a garment that I have an idea of. So I hope you enjoyed that and let's tune into the next thing. Power. fabric friend guys if you're ever feeling lonely make yourself this little guy here made all out of fabric keeps you company plays people with me drinks beer and everything stay safe and deuces oh congratulations on that, so it's a completely different way of um, operating in, in lockdown, communicating. Can you just uh, I explain, um, yeah, your YouTube and Instagram presence as, as part of your process? So YouTube, um, I, I documented a lot, uh, um, a lot of uh, videos throughout my uh, final year, and I found videos as a way of uh, community uh, communicating uh, my process and um, documenting everything because I, I feel like it gives. Um, you as an audience like the, the insight that you need into the way that I do work um, and then with the um, Instagram um, I, I focus more on um, the I, I guess um, handmade uh, things and uh, uh, vi videography uh, like gifts and stuff and like music that, that has been a big part of um, my final year so I, I, I try to incorporate everything within um, my practice and especially like uh, this digital form that we can um, present our work in um, and, and that's been like very powerful for myself because I've I've learned so much through my final year but also in lockdown um, because I, I was understanding ways to uh, communicate things and for you um, as the audience looking um, at my work giving you that insight and like you understand it a lot more you have videos to um, go back and forth with and 
you can really see like everything like from like development to like the, the, the final collection and um, it's a really big part um, what working in a digital way so I, I try to do everything maybe pictures or photography um, the videography um, the music especially making uh, my own music um, so yeah it, it's been it's been really good um, have you got have you got some thoughts and um, feedback in general about, about what we've been seeing this morning well, I just think it's it's blown my mind open wide to some things and themes that, that I think I've been thinking about a lot about transparency, transparency and process. And I think Miles, like seeing your process was so was so special and into I, 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 I was I could see my eyes going back and forth, like through how you were making that clothing and just being brought into your world. I think there's that intimacy that you don't get usually. And for me, that's really special. and it's so crazy to think I'm so far away from you, but yet you all manage to bring me inside your world. And for me, that's what I strive to do when I get to know a designer, when I'm reviewing it, when I'm at a show, I'm trying to sort of, you know, connect with that and sort of figure out that, I mean, that's what's so great about a show in a sense, but this to me is just like, wow, this, all, everything I've seen today has really sort of blown my mind open in terms of, of communication, of, of using the resources that you have and also connecting a, a sort of a lot of the designers that I've been speaking to have sort of like what well, how do I make fashion meaningful now like you know using fashion as a vehicle for something bigger and I think you've all done that because I think if you're not connected to the culture and you're not connected to the world around you then it, it just doesn't mean anything but I think everything I've seen today has like made me feel tingles <laughs> and good and and it, it just feels soulful and I think that's what fashion should be so and I think a lot of brands are sort of struggling with how to connect to that and how to create that intimacy but I'm blown away. <laughs> are you Ashish as a practitioner? Um, yeah I, I think for me like I said um, I think what I'm really so inspired by is actually the energy and the individuality and the personality that comes out in each person's work and you know I when and you know talking about student shows in particular sometimes when you go to student shows you know things get lost a little bit sometimes and I think sometimes it's hard to have such a um kind of unique point of view in you know the the whatever one minute you have on the two couple of minutes you have but I think creating something like this actually is um like I think somebody said it it kind of forced them to go outside their comfort zone um and to do something that they would never usually have done or kind of taught themselves and I think that's such a brave I mean it's actually very brave what everybody has done it's it's incredible um you know to be kind of locked up and it's just it's like this you know like it's that thing of necessity is the mother of invention and it's that thing where you're kind of forced to just use the things you have at your disposal to create something magical and fabulous and everybody's done that so incredibly well um so you know amazing i also actually just want to go back a, uh, for a minute to um um who's alexandra who um did that beautiful film and it was talking about how, you know, doing things that last forever. And I think that is, that world should be the future, making special, beautiful things that last forever. And, you know, the idea of people buying one special thing that they think will last them forever and they'll keep forever, rather than buying, you know, 10 things that you don't particularly care about that much and you wear twice and never see again. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's a really important thing and craft and, you know, making things by hand and going back to analog and not worrying about being so slick. And I think the, the, you know, the unsustainability as well of fashion shows and how expensive they are. And if you're a young brand, actually, it's so incredible to be able to just go outside that box and say, you know, I'm not going to um, conform to this structure. I'm just going to do something that speaks to my audience and actually tells them who I am and what my work is and who I'm about. Um, and I think all of that has been so brilliantly addressed here. It's been really inspiring. So, you know, thank you for sharing that. Um, I, um, I, uh, Miles, I, I wanted to ask you about your policy of spending zero money. Oh, of course. So um, for my final collection, I decided to make the big decision of um, uh, be, being sustainable, but also spending uh, zero money. 
And uh, very early on, I was like, there's no way this is going to work. Uh, and then things uh, kind of like picked up very quickly. Um, I was using uh, Calico um, and Canvas um, from the studio. So using all the scraps from like the bins. And then um, I was able to, um, along the way, I was able to get some uh, donations. Um, and I got a massive uh, donation um, of uh, knitwear and like, uh, like jumpers, sleeves, um, yarn. And that was when the knitwear um, started coming along. Because very early on, I was like, I was using all of these materials that it, it wasn't knitwear. There was no knitwear in uh, my collection. And it was like, oh no, I need to make a, a jumper out of a knit. So um, that, that all happened. And um, the, 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 uh, I, I, I want to say as well, the way that um, I was working, because I was working in a way of spending no money, and I really tried to flip... Um, the, my studio practice on its head and turn everything like upside down. So I just I decided to make the decision of making fifty um, garments. So I made a sec, uh, selection of um, jumpers, um, jackets, trousers, um, coats, like everything. Uh, I, I done a, a boot sample um, out of foam and uh, calico as well. And working in that way, I, I was able to see how much stuff I could produce because at, at the end of it, with, with 50 garments on my rail, I was able to put together um, things um, in a way, using it as like a styling practice. So I have all of these different avenues and it was, yeah, spending no money was amazing. And I advise um, the fashion industry um, and yeah, future students to maybe take up on it because it, it's amazing and I've learned so much from it. And it was truly incredible. Well, we're blown away. I feel very, very um, lucky and uh, humbled to, to to be able to see what you've um, what you've all come up with. And this is such a an incredibly memorable year for um, so many awful reasons. But I think now we're on the the brink of um, creative creative breakthroughs um, and societal breakthroughs. Which actually, I mean, like Joma, I I, I feel tingles um, seeing 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 the potential here. And how um, and how you're breaking down all the all the barriers and breakers, as 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 she said, out of the uh, the boxes of what fashion is, and even what um, future employment will be. Um, because I mean, any of you could be in, employed as, uh, um, uh, as as videographers, as as animators, as as communicators, as much as as being fashion designers. So. Um, I think you've used your education absolutely brilliantly and you've risen to this, the challenge of today. And I'm so, so um, honored to be able to see, to see what you've done. And so thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Sarah, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to uh, finish off, well, firstly, by thanking our panelists, Ashish and Choma. Thank you um, for your contributions. Um, I think we got a lot from this, didn't we? It looks like you really enjoyed the session as well. Um, Thank you to Sarah um, on behalf of the BSC for all the work that you do for us um, in education, but more importantly, thank you on behalf of our educators and our students because you tirelessly champion all their work. So thank you for hosting today. And to our gorgeous students on the call, um, that was absolutely incredible. You all just brought something so different to the table. Um, I really salute you all for, for doing this um, and getting through difficult times. Um, I think I'd like to sort of sum up by wishing the class of 2020 all the very best. It's been an incredible time, um, economically, politically, societally, everything seems to be spinning into different directions, but out of exceptional circumstances, we always see exceptional talent and creativity and you're at the cusp of that. So I wish you all the very best. I think you've, you've got a really huge success successful future ahead of you all.